Okay guys, we've just gotten back from our shoot with Natalie and looking at the back of the camera monitor, I've realized that I've gone and shot in excess of 700 images, okay? And I can really hear you guys saying, oh my goodness, it's gonna take you ages to call through that many images from a shoot. So here's the thing, guys. I've been a portrait photographer that's been shooting full-time for the last 13 years. And over these 13 years, I've realized that I've had to have a very efficient way of culling through my images so that it won't take me hours upon hours. And I get it guys, you, you get home and you've got these hundreds of images to go through and it's the boring part and you hate it and it takes forever. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you over to my computer and I'm gonna show you exactly how I cull through my images efficiently and it will take for example that time of five hours to cull you know 2,000 images down to a mere 30 minutes to cull through 2,000 images that's how effective this process is what we're going to do now is we're going to pop over to the computer and I'm going to show you exactly what I do inside of Lightroom Classic that speeds up my culling times so let's go over right now we are now inside of Lightroom Classic and what we're going to do is just make sure that the structure that we need to have in Lightroom is in place before we start our culling process. So there are a few things that we need to ensure are in place before we cull. The very first thing is that we need to make sure that we've built our previews for our images. Now from a previous tutorial where I spoke about optimizing Lightroom, I'd built standard previews. For me, standard previews is good enough. The standard previews resolution is 2880 pixels, okay? And I can see straight away here that she's lovely in focus, okay? This is important. The other thing that I wanna make sure is in place is that auto sync is turned off. So let's do this quickly. We're gonna select this range of images, one to five, for example, and by default, Lightroom turns on auto sync. So if you make any kind of changes to selected images, it's going to affect all of the images. So if I press P for flag, it's gonna flag all of those images and that's not what we want, okay? I'm just gonna undo that by pressing U on the keyboard. I wanna make sure that auto sync is turned off. So this disappears. The other thing that I wanna do here is hide away the side panels. I don't need the side panels here because they're just going to be distracting me, all right? So I'm gonna press tab on the keyboard and that hides away the side panels. I want all of the desktop estate for the images that I wanna view here. One of the things that I need to do here, and unfortunately I'm on a single monitor to show you this, I've actually got a dual monitor setup. So when I click on number two here, it actually displays a very big version of Natalie on my second screen. But for the purpose of this tutorial, we're gonna work like this because it kind of works the same if you got a single monitor. Now what I wanna do here is just resize my main window that I'm gonna be working on right here. Let's just stretch this out a little bit here. And what we're going to do is press N for November on the keyboard, N for November, switches us to what we call the survey mode. And this is where the magic lies inside Lightroom. So what we need to do in this case here, and as you can see here, I've selected image one to number five. Why did I do that? Because they all very similar. And here's the really cool thing. I'm getting this bird's eye view of all of my images. There's five images here, and I wanna select the best one and I would say this one here. I'm not actually scrolling through each and every individual image one for one. That process just takes way, way too long. Here I'm seeing a bird's eye view. I'm seeing it very quickly and I can say, okay, that one of Natalie looks fantastic. Let's select that. Let's just make sure she's in focus. There we go, she's in focus. That confirms that it's all okay. And I press P, look, We've just gone and blazed through five images there. Now, I'll logically think, okay, I changed the scene over here. Let's select the next 
set of images. You can see that these all look fairly similar. And what I'm going to do is hold shift and select. So we've got six images this time. Let's have a look at which one of these images is gonna suit us the best. They're all very similar. Let's say, for example, we randomly select this image over here. We can zoom in on monitor number two. How did I get that? This is very easy. We're switching this on and off so we can see we've got a larger view and I'm just zooming in very quickly and I'm going, okay, that's great. Let's pick that image. So there we go. I flagged it as a picked image. I can then go on to the next series of images. Let's say, for example, we've got these over here and we select the whole bunch of images. We can see straight away, okay, these ones with the sky don't look great. Maybe these ones over here where we've got the leading lines up to Natalie, those look great. Let's make sure that she's lovely and focus. And we use this monitor over here to double check that focus. And it looks great. We can choose another one just to make sure we've got a good expression. You can see that this one is a little bit softer. Let's go for that one. And you can see that we're not going one for one. It's not a single image per view, okay? We're having an overview of everything. Maybe this one over here, I can see a lovely smile there. That looks great. We might select that one. I press P for pick on my keyboard. There isn't any of this, okay, I might give that a star rating of five, or maybe that one I don't really like. It's a number two, star rating of two, or we start this color coding process. Okay, that's good. I'll give it a green. Oh, that's bad. I'm going to reject it. I don't do any of that. Those are just extra keyboard strokes. That's unnecessary, okay? Look at the next set here. Very easy. This is how I'm breaking it down. I'm looking at this and I'm going, okay, that's that set that look very similar. Let's have a look at the different poses. You can see that she tilted her head the other way. There's one tilted this way. Let's check, is the focus there? Yes, it is. Pick, and we go to the next one. I've slowed this process down, particularly for you guys starting out to understand how I'm doing this. That's a gorgeous smile. That's nicely in focus. Pick it. Let's go to the next set. All right, we've only got three images there that look very similar in the portrait orientation. We don't need to go to every one of them. We can check, okay, that looks great. The others are fairly similar. Pick, move, go for it. Yeah, we've got a whole range there. So I'm making a conscious decision of how many images I'm selecting, and I'm selecting it based on the mindset that I had during the shoot. I'm not being distracted. Let's look at Natalie's expressions here. We can see sharpness, fine, pick it. There's another one over here where we might have had a slightly different angle. Pick it, move along. Here we had half body shots. Okay, we can look at those. Again, zooming in. But you guys get the message. Very, very simple. All right, over here, we change to a longer lens. How do I know that? Because of the depth of field here. If I press I on the keyboard, there's our information about the shoot there. So one over 250th of a second at f1.8 with an ISO of 100. And I was shooting with the 135. So with the 135, for example, I can look through and see here, watch this. I'm gonna scroll back here. We're starting with this image over here and I'm gonna shift select all of the ones where she's facing the camera. Not these over here, just facing the camera. And I can see here, we've got the different poses. There's one with both hands next to each other. Okay, nice and gently down, beautiful pointy fingers, lovely pose, I love it. And then we can go to the next one where she changed her pose and put the arm or put the hand in the hip here. And we've got our next image. Pick it, move along, okay? So we've already blazed through 54 images in no time. Next set, she's looking away from the camera. And I'm thinking exactly how I was doing things during the shoot, okay? We've got a couple more here. I just went to town, <laughs> it was crazy. I got really, really trigger happy. But look at that, in focus, pick, right? Next one, in focus, pick, maybe look at the expression. Yeah, that's good. Here's a nice smiley one. Pick it, lovely, let's go, all right? And the next set. So you guys get the message. We are now sort of breaking things down into the sets, into the scenes, into the different poses, 
and we're making our life easy when it comes to the selection. You can see straight away here, oh, no, that's not a go, go. All right, let's have a look at that one. Lovely expression, nice and sharp, in focus. Let's have a look at this one over here where we frame slightly different. The point here is that we're getting this bird's eye view of many images. We haven't got one image passing the screen each time and then we're thinking, oh yeah, maybe, I don't know. You know, that's where the time consumption comes in, folks. And I can tell you now, within 10, 15 minutes, I can have this cold very, very quickly. So once I've gone through the whole process of picking out my favorite images of Natalie, I then go and filter by the flags that I created. So what we do is we then close this off. Let's get us a full screen view of everything here. Bring the tabs back, exit out of our survey mode. And then what I do is I click on the filter to pick all the flagged images. There we go. We've got 15 excellent images that we curated in a very short space of time. And then once I've got all of those images selected in Natalie's gallery, then I'll press Control A, select them all, and I will give them a specific sequenced name. So we've got a lot of control over our images after we've selected them. We can then send these images to our clients as a proof gallery, for example, and it's all in sequential order. And we know that the images that we've sent over to our clients are the ones that we love the most. And we're not editing images that we don't actually like, okay? And as I said before, you know, I can take a wedding of 2000 images and cull them within a couple of minutes. Seriously, guys, it doesn't take a long time to really nail down the best images. And how aggressive you are in that culling process is completely up to you. So there you have it, folks. I hope this has been informative. I go through the selection process in many of my classes in the membership. You get to see me working behind the scenes with subjects like Natalie. I'm actually working currently on a tutorial where I take you guys on location. I teach you how to see amazing light that will give you these beautiful catch lights in the eyes that really define our subjects. It's everything packaged nice and neatly there for you to learn. You don't have to go anywhere. It's all there. So folks, thank you so much for tuning into my channel today. I really appreciate the support. If you like this video, I'd love to ask you to subscribe to the channel. I've got lots more like this where it's coming from. Have a fantastic day and we'll see you in the next tutorial. Cheers for now.